We're in Matthew chapter 5 tonight, and welcome to all those who are joining us online, either right now or later. If you would like to give to the work of God, you can do so online at our website, which is on our Facebook page. And may God bless you for your continued support of God's house here in the Camp Humphreys area. But for tonight's message, Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, looking to verse number 17 is our starting point. As we've already entered into God's presence with worship and praise, as the Word tells us, and ready to minister and receive from God's Word. Matthew 5 and chapter... Chapter 5, verse number 17, Jesus speaking, he says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill, but to fulfill. Our title for tonight's message, Are You Keeping God's Law or Are You Fulfilling God's Law? Now, if you would like to follow along with tonight's outline, I've also made it into a blog post over at PastorFulmer.com slash Keeping or Fulfilling. PastorFulmer.com slash Keeping or Fulfilling. Uh, I don't always post my outlines, but tonight's outline, the message God gave me uh, for the service, I felt like that my email subscribers would also get a blessing from it. And so if you've already subscribed, it's already in your inbox right now because I sent it out shortly before the service tonight. So that's pastorfulmer.com slash keeping or fulfilling. Are you keeping God's law or are you fulfilling God's law? Here in Matthew 5, we're going to go through a number of verses here. And we're going to look at how that the Lord Jesus teaches us that there is a big difference between just keeping God's law and fulfilling God's law. And it wants to show us that while keeping the laws of God are the first step in our lives for Him, there is a much bigger purpose in it or to it than just that. In other words, the Word of God is more than just doing what the words on a piece of paper tell us to do. And we've kind of uh, taught around the topic before, but we're going to seek with God's help to bring it all into one focused picture so that we can understand what God is using His commands, His laws to do. They're not just to keep us busy till we die. So here in Matthew 5, verses 17 through 48, we will not read through all those tonight. We will not minister through all those tonight. But in verses 17 through 48, mainly because I have another message that I'm working on in the same arena, in the same verses here. But in this grouping of verses, 17 through 48, the Lord is teaching what it means to fulfill the law of God rather than just keeping the law of God. The law of God being not just the individual commandments in the Word of God, but it is based on the greater law of love for God and for people. So we're already starting to see that within God's commandments, what we're calling His laws or His law, it begins with a greater love for God and for people. That overarching all the commandments of God, there is a greater law. I'm going to get more into that in a bit. This is what Jesus points out over in Matthew 22, verses 37 through 40. When he says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. So he just mentioned what? Loving God. Then he says, the second one is like it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And then he says, on these two commandments hang all the law and prophets. Meaning all the rest of the commandments that we know that are written down, all the messages of the prophets that we can read in the Bible, they are all hinged upon loving God and loving people. Showing us that if we can't love God, it doesn't matter even if we do keep His commandments. It is for nothing because we are doing it not out of a heart of love. 
and so on for people. Paul would echo this in Galatians 6 and 2. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. The law of Christ. And so even above the word of God, let's just take a moment here to recognize, a lot of times people say things like, show me in the Bible where it says, I, I have to or I cannot do this. Show me in the Bible where it says, and yet not even realizing there is a greater law above that. The love of God and then loving others. Because if we can't do these things, we can keep all these commandments of God and it will not matter to God because we won't have the right intentions. That's the word that's going to come up later. So first let's talk about fulfilling versus destroying. Fulfilling versus destroying. The Lord starts this section in Matthew 5, and verse 17, as I read. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Now there seems to have been this sense that Jesus had come to this world to do away with the law of God and the messages of the prophets. There seems to have been this belief that he was coming to start his own religious system and do away with everything that the Jews had held dear. But he's making it clear that this was not the case. Jesus not only came to fulfill the law and prophets that pointed to him as Messiah and Savior, but also to teach us how to fulfill the law of God as well in our own lives. So there are so many layers to this section in God's Word that oftentimes we just blaze through Matthew 5 because it's 48 verses long and I need to hurry up and get my daily chapter out of the way that we don't even realize Jesus is peeling back these layers of how to please God, but also what God always intended through His commandments. The law and prophets of the Old Testament actually pointed to a greater calling for God's people. A greater calling. So often I believe we get so caught up in what we are doing that we forget that it's part of a greater calling. And it's quite natural to get caught up in our daily routines and daily tasks. But we forget, often I believe, we forget that we are striving for something even greater. The commandments of God in the New Testament do the same thing. They point us to the greater calling for God's people. Amen. If the Lord had come to destroy them, understand, if the Lord had come to destroy them, He would have done away with the very foundational messages that were meant to point us to this greater calling. And so He's showing us now that the Old Testament commandments pointed to Him, pointed to someone greater, His greater ministry, which then we partake of as a greater ministry and therefore as a greater purpose. If He had come to destroy those things, He would have destroyed the very foundation that pointed us to what God has always wanted us to see. The greater calling of fulfilling His Word rather than just doing what His Word says. So much more to the Word of God and obeying the Word of God than just obeying the Word of God. So are you keeping God's law or are you fulfilling God's law? Let's keep going and find out. Next, let's talk about keeping a law versus fulfilling a law. Whenever we think of laws, it is probably natural to think of keeping those laws. Speed limits, red light, green light, yield signs, the things that most people don't keep. But when there's a law in place, we think of what? I've got to keep this law. It's very natural. Why else would a law be written unless it was meant to be kept, right? That's what we think. Why else would it be written unless it was meant to be kept? 
Jesus understood that this is how people naturally think. In this section of scriptures, though, the Lord is showing us that God's law was given not simply to be kept, though that is certainly part of it, but to point us to a higher level of thinking and living that transcends simply abiding by the constraints of words on a page. He count, he's, he's teaching us here so that we can learn to transcend to a higher level of thinking and living and not get stuck just trying to keep, the, uh, keep within the constraints of God's words written on a page. The level of God's commandments, not out of constraint and obligation, keeping them, uh, not just out of obligation, but because we love Him enough to do so. So that's the next level we want to go to. We want to go to the next level of not just keeping them, but loving Him enough to do so. But there's more beyond that. And often this is where we as ministers stop, where if... We love God, we will keep His commandments. Because we reference John chapter 14, verse 15. Jesus said, what? Well, if you love me, keep my commandments. And often that's where we teach, and that's where we preach, and that's where we take people. But we don't often go beyond that. But Jesus goes beyond that here in Matthew chapter 5. There is a significant difference between keeping a law and fulfilling a law. Keeping the law produces a sense of obligation and duty while fulfilling a law, even God's laws, while fulfilling a law produces a sense of calling and purpose. Even the Bible can become, uh, can become a sense of obligation and duty if all we do for God is what we do because the Bible says. Even the Word of God can... Uh, can give us this sense of oppressive obligation. But once we see what Christ meant by to fulfill God's word, we start having this sense of purpose and calling. So let's look at this section and see what else the Lord teaches us as it pertains to the difference between keeping the law of God and fulfilling the law of God. So let's talk about actions versus intentions. Actions versus intentions. So what have we talked about so far? Loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Loving people. And then loving God enough to keep His commandments and not out of obligation. But then the Lord goes further than that. Verse 21, talking about actions versus intentions. Verse 21. Jesus says, you have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill. And that word kill there means murder, to intentionally take someone's life unnecessarily so. Thou shalt not kill, he says, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. He's referencing the Old Testament law, thou shalt not kill. The law of Moses dealt with people's actions after the intentions. This is why it was said in the Old Testament law, thou shalt not kill or murder. The law did not say thou shalt not intend to kill. Thou shalt not think about killing. It said what? Thou shalt not kill. It dealt with the actions after the intentions. Subsequently, there were then punishments laid out in the law for people's unlawful actions. Their unlawful, not unlawful intentions, unlawful actions, such as murder, working on the Sabbath day, etc. In this section of Matthew 5, Jesus deals with people's intentions before the actions. So now we're drilling down to a deeper level of keeping God's word. The fulfilling thereof. So the Old Testament dealt with actions after intentions, but Jesus is dealing with intentions before actions. He is sharing throughout these verses that these issues need to, need to be dealt with while they are still in the heart. Before they become action, 
get you into trouble and potentially ruin your entire lives, your entire life. Like Jesus would say in verse 25, and the judge deliver thee to the officer and thou be cast into prison. So the Lord is taking us deeper into the fulfilling of God's law, God's word. Fulfilling God's word is not the, just the doing of it. Thank God we have to do God's word. It's, it, that's part of Christian living. But fulfilling it is far more than just that. And it even goes beyond doing God's word just because you love him. Just because you love him. He's going even deeper than that. We're, we're talking about fulfilling the word of God now. So Jesus is dealing with intentions before they become actions, get you into trouble, potentially ruin your life, such as sending you to prison, as he mentioned. God always intended for the outcomes of breaking his law to be a dissuading factor, to be enough for us to deal with our intentions and prevent such outcomes from occurring. God always wanted the judgments, the outcomes, to dissuade mankind from even committing the actions. But we, found, we find out what? People were committing these things anyway, even though they knew the outcome. I'm pretty sure there are lots of people in prison today who wish they would have dealt with their intentions in their hearts before those intentions became actions. But for many of them, it is too late. And now we're getting down to what it really means to fulfill the Word of God. So what have we learned so far? Love God with everything about you. Learn to love other people. This is what the law and the prophets have always told us to do, Jesus brought out. And when you're obeying God's word, make sure you're doing it because you love him and not from religious obligation. But what is a true fulfilling of God's word? Dealing with things while they are in the heart before they become action. Dealing with intentions. Dealing with thoughts and feelings. This is what the Lord is actually teaching us here in Matthew 5. See, this transcends doing things for God because you love Him. Thank God for that. That's a great thing. But if it gets to the level of the doing, there's a step before that, which is what? Intentions. Our desires. What do we intend? This is what the Lord's teaching us. is actually fulfilling the Word of God. So are you keeping God's law or are you fulfilling God's law? Next, let's talk about what the older people used to say. The generation of the Lord was no different than generations today. The old people don't know anything. That's pretty much what he's dealing with here. And notice here the Lord says, you've heard that it was said by them of old time. Most people are in a hurry to leave the old ways in the past and adopt every new way simply because it's socially accepted at that time. And the Jews were no different. The Jews were no different. People today, people then, people are people. And so he's bringing out, we're treating the old people's way of doing things like, they're, like the ways that they do things are old just like they are. Let's go on. It seems that every generation has a tendency of dismissing what the older generation used to say, even though it was the older generations that brought the current generation to the place of peace and prosperity they are currently enjoying. The Jews that Jesus was talking to, they're not the ones who crossed the Red Sea. They're not the ones who crossed the River Jordan. They're not the ones who walked around the walls of Jericho for those seven days. They're not the ones who did all that. They're the ones who had the nice big temple of Solomon. They're the ones who had uh, the Pharisees wearing the long, nice, beautiful robes. They're the ones who had everything in place for them. So the Lord is dealing, was dealing then much of what we deal with now. 
People treating the older generations like they're irrelevant, though it was the older generation who has brought us to where we are now. And that applies wherever there are generations and generational gaps and divisions. Verse 22, Jesus said, But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. It's as if Jesus is saying, the old people used to say, don't commit murder. But if our generation truly does want to be better, and this is a message for all generations, by the way, the old people used to say this, but if our generation truly wants to be better, then it will be by dealing with these issues while they are still in the heart before they become actions, rather than just trying to abstain from the evil actions themselves. So what is it bringing out? The old people used to tell us, don't commit murder. Jesus is saying, I'm telling you, deal with it in your heart before it becomes murder. Or before you even uh, have, before it even becomes too much of a desire to become murder. Before you go find something to murder someone with. So Jesus is dealing with that young generation issue back then. If you want to be better than the older generation like you think you are, then learn to deal with issues in your heart before they even get to the level that the older people said to abstain from and quit just trying to abstain from evil actions. Keeping God's law because we love Him and dealing with issues while they are still in the heart is how we fulfill the law of God. So Jesus said what earlier? He said, I didn't come to destroy, I came to fulfill. And I'm going to teach you how to fulfill. Not just keep, not just do stuff, and certainly not keep putting out these fires of your actions. Jesus said, I'm going to teach you how to actually fulfill what the Old Testament and now the commandments of the Lord teaches. Deal with things in the heart with the power of God, of course, with the power of God. Deal with things in the heart and don't even let them become action. You talk about a full-time, lifelong challenge right there. Simply trying to abstain from evil actions is keeping the law of God. Keeping God's laws because we love Him and dealing with issues while they are still in the heart is how we fulfill God's law. As I said earlier, I'm going to say it again. As I mentioned earlier, keeping a law produces a sense of obligation and duty. I have to do this. While fulfilling God's law produces a sense of calling and purpose. It's a worship. It is a worship unto the Lord. It is a service. It is an obedience to the Lord. To deal with things as they rise up in the heart. Fulfilling God's law is also a far more empowering way to live because it gives you total control over most situations. It does this by giving control over the intentions, which control the actions, which in turn control the outcomes. And this is what the Lord is trying to teach us. Sister Fulmer, if you can come on to the music, please. The Lord is trying to teach us, you really want to get to a higher level of me? You want to be more like me? You want to know what it's like to be able to please God on such a higher level than most, even most Christians are willing to even try? Learn, with the power of God, learn to take control of intentions in the heart. Then you will not allow them to become actions, but rather it will turn you toward God, and you will learn to keep His law better because you're learning how to fulfill His law first. 
So let's not get so wrapped up in simply keeping God's laws, as important as that is. But we've got one thing to do first. Let's fulfill them, and so shall we be, so shall we truly understand what it's like to be more like Christ. The reason Jesus did not sin is because, first of all, he stayed in contact with the Father through prayer and received empowerment, but he dealt with issues while it was still in his heart. Really, this is your heart. He dealt with issues while they were still in the heart. And thus, by the power of God, he squashed them before they became actions. Whenever a child of God starts learning how to fulfill God's word that way, they are moving to such a higher level of thinking, living, and serving God that their entire outlook and therefore their entire lives will change. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for all who are here tonight and all who are watching. We ask you, God, to just help us. Be willing to be fulfillers of your word and not just doers. Not just hearers, not just doers, but fulfillers of your word. And so shall we be more like Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Let's all take some time to pray and connect with God and let him empower us to do this as she sings unto the Lord. God bless